Yes, good boy. Hey guys, Kayla here from Journey Dog Training. Um, I'm here because I have something really exciting to announce. I am getting a puppy. Um, I'm driving to go pick up the puppy later today, so we're kind of in the final stages of preparing right now. Um, he's a, another little border collie. I'm getting him from an amazing breeder who breeds dogs specifically for sports and work, so I'm hoping he's gonna grow up to be an amazing detection dog just like Barley. Um, so this video is gonna be all about puppy proofing and just kind of the preparations I'm putting into it. Um, I also wanted to give a little bit of an up update um, for those of you guys who have been around for a while. You may notice that this <laughs> is a new backdrop. So I moved um, uh, about a week ago now. I moved uh, the weekend before I got the puppy <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. And that is because I lost my job. So I was fired from my dream job earlier this month or about a month ago now. And um, so I'm currently unemployed slash just kind of running journey dog training full time, uh, going back to freelance work. Um, I almost ended up not bringing the puppy home because of that, um, because obviously I'm a little bit close, like, <laughs> obviously I'm tighter on money than I was, um, you know, a month ago, a month and a half ago, but I'm doing okay financially to the point where it feels like being unemployed is going to be a good time to raise the puppy and um, I, I will be able to afford everything. So um, it's stressful, but it's exciting and I'm actually really excited about my new place. I'm now... Um, a ways outside of Missoula on five acres and it's just beautiful. I um, I really like it. So let's talk a little bit about poppy proofing. Um, so the main reason obviously that poppy proofing is important is just because you're not going to be able to supervise all the time. Um, and you need to make sure that when you are brushing your teeth or going to the bathroom or on a Zoom call or sleeping or running to the store or whatever, your puppy is safe, safely contained. This is important for obviously your possessions safety, you know, your books or your shoes, but also for your puppy's safety. You don't want your puppy chewing on cords or eating cleaning materials or whatever and getting sick. So first thing I've got here is this is a Carlton Pet Products pet gate slash pen. So what I like about this thing, um, is it shouldn't be easily climbable because it doesn't have any crossbars. Um, the puppy I'm bringing home is quite the escape artist. Um, and you can actually get it to kind of cement into these different shapes by like loosening this, then it then this joint will pivot again. And then when you get it where you want it, you can actually tighten it down again. Um, got a little gate here unfortunately the gate only goes one way so I can't open it this way but I'm pretty pleased with it overall and I'm gonna bring you guys with me now to look at the rest of the puppy pen so what you'll see now in the puppy pen is I have a crate with a nice cushy bed in it and that crate is right next to my desk so puppy is likely to naturally kind of fall asleep in that crate and snooze while I'm working at my desk because that's closest to me should make crate training a little bit easier. And then I have a variety of toys and chews and just fun objects. I'm actually going into town to look at some thrift, to get some thrift store items just for some further things. But you know, a couple different toys, some that squeak, some that crinkle. Um, we have a nice bone um, that's made for puppy teething, a little tug toy, something that's shreddable. And then an unstable surface for puppy to kind of step up onto. That's just a fun training thing. And then the other thing I'm about to open up is this gift basket from Our Greenhouse. So they let you make custom gift baskets that have eco-friendly designs. Um, and they sent me one for your puppy. So I'm going to go ahead and open that now and we'll just kind of see what's in there. Um, other stuff I'm keeping nearby. I have my Furbo here so I can actually watch the puppy, hear the puppy, shoot treats at the puppy phone slash coupon book that I'm going to let the puppy shred. Um, over time, puppy has a jacket. Um, these cleaning supplies are not going to stay here because they're a risk uh, that close to the puppy, but they do need to be nearby. So I really like Clean Carls. Um, they're a relatively new company, um, but I've actually been really loving their stuff. It is um, 
oxidizing and it's an odor eliminator so unlike a lot of the other cleaners i've used it truly doesn't leave much of a smell which is just awesome um it works really quickly i've had to use it unfortunately on a lot of diarrhea and vomit already and it works like a charm so clean carl's is pretty great um we're probably just going to keep that up in these cabinets so those are kind of the basics of what I've got in the puppy pen. I'm also going to be adding a litter box, um, food and water bowls today. Um, again, I'm going into town. I'm gonna try to get some nice stuff that crinkles, stuff that makes noise. I'm gonna get some recycling that I can screw some gravel into that the puppy can push around just to make noise. All sorts of fun stuff like that that you guys will get to see more of. But the big thing that I want you guys to take home here is that an exercise pen is just really going to save your sanity with a puppy. Um, you know, a lot of us know about crate training, we understand that, but there's a lot of time where it's just, it's not appropriate to crate your puppy for 23 hours a day or 20 hours a day even, but an exercise pen lets you contain your puppy and keep them safe from your stuff and your stuff safe from them whenever you're not able to be looking and give your puppy a lot more space than if they had just an X pen. So let's take a peek at what's in this uh, greenhouse uh, gift basket and uh, then I'll kind of show you guys what's happening in the rest of my apartment to prepare for the puppy. All right, let's take a look here. So again, kind of this cool custom gift basket. It's really cute. Um, the main reason I haven't opened it yet is because I wanted to open it on YouTube because it is just so darn pretty. Um, so let's see. First thing I'm seeing is the ultimate guide to raising a puppy by Victoria Stillwell. I actually am likely to read this. Um, this is going to be my first time raising a puppy, and even though I'm a professional trainer, I'm excited to check this out, and I actually really trust Victoria Stillwell and her stuff. So first glance, I'm actually really pleased that they chose this book um, to include here instead of something really old school and crappy. So well done there. What else? And then we have a very cute little Triceratops. Um, kind of feels like there's a squeaker inside of it, but uh, there it is. Might be a little challenging for a baby puppy to squeak, but cute little Triceratops toy. Um, this is some Chugga's Choice All Natural Doggy Soap with tea tree and lavender to soothe irritated skin. I assume this is dog shampoo. Um, looks nice. I'll go put that in my grooming pile. A little tiny jacket. I have a feeling he might grow out of this and it's kind of a t-shirt material. Um, I have a feeling he, if he hasn't already he might have grown out. He's going to grow out of this very quickly but it's from Love Thy Beast. Um, it is just kind of a cute little hoodie. Again kind of t-shirt material though. I don't know if it's gonna cut it in Montana winters but my roommate has a Papillon puppy right now and um, he might appreciate this. And that's uh and then we've got some hound dog, responsibly sourced banana, peanut butter, and honey, handmade dog treats from the hipster hound, from hipster hound bites. Uh, these actually look awesome. Um, they're definitely too big to use as training treats, uh, especially for a little puppy. And they're pretty hard. <clears throat> I actually can't break them, so. Uh, you know, again, it, for a larger dog or, you know, your adult dog, they're going to be fine snacks. Uh, they're not really training treats, so certainly can't use these to potty train my puppy. And they're so hard, they will see if baby puppy teeth can go through them right away. And then a, a, a portion of the proceeds from this gift helped support the Danbury Animal Welfare Society. So that's awesome. Um, I think overall my verdict on this gift basket is it's a really cute, awesome idea, great place to start. Um, don't think that you can order this gift basket and you'll just have everything you need for your puppy right away, but that's okay. Um, and actually I'm excited about this. More shreddable stuff for the puppy, so that's good. And a cute little basket that we can now use for puppy's stuff. So puppy now has her, his own basket. That's certainly a good thing. Um, the other product that I've checked out that I've really liked so far that I don't actually have in front of me is Pup Box, which is a subscription delivery box for your puppy. Um, I got one of those earlier and um, have absolutely loved a lot of the stuff that's come out of it. It's got 
several of the toys back in here are from that. Um, it had an information card on crate training and potty training and other kind of common problems for your like brand new baby puppy. Um, and it looked, seemed really, really awesome. I didn't subscribe, so I don't know what hum comes in the next box or what um, what kind of continues to come from it, but it seemed like a great option and potentially, uh, yeah, it seemed, it seemed like the better way to go, frankly, if you have the finances because it was going to continue bringing you stuff. And especially I would go with that pup box over something like Bark Box that's made for adult dogs because the pup box is specifically tailored to move with your puppy as your puppy grows. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm excited about all of this and then let's see what's going on with the rest of my apartment because again This is where puppy is going to live. I would say most of the time um, I don't want to put a percentage on it But basically if I'm not actively engaging with the puppy or like the puppy is not sleeping on my lap puppy is going to be in here um, That and that is just a sanity thing for me. So We'll look at some of the other risk areas So we'll give you a tour of the apartment and look at some of the other risk areas. So Obviously, shoes are still on the ground. Um, that is just kind of a reality for me in my new place. I don't have a closet or an entryway where I can put the shoes. So that's why puppy lives in the baby gate. Other stuff that are in puppy's reach, glass alcohol bottles and books. So those books are high risk. Um, that makes me really nervous. I might end up getting another exercise pen to put around the books and maybe I can figure out how to get the books and the shoes behind the same exercise pen. Exercise gear, couch, Barley's crate, all of that is pretty well dog proof. Dog toys, my laundry, which I might end up putting, so this is my closet. It is a, uh, a dog kennel that we have turned into a closet. So I can put some stuff in there to keep it safe. Um, I've also got plants that are high risk up there. Uh, I might end up needing to put those away if and when puppy starts climbing the couch, but for now they're fine. Dresser. I don't care too much about this dresser. It actually has already been chewed on by the previous owner's dog. So that's something else that's high risk. My bed frame is metal. I'm not too worried about it. I do have a uh, carpet that is likely to get soiled if I'm not careful. And then cords. So this place that I live in is actually only heated by space heaters. So cords there and there are just going to be a reality of it for me right now. So obviously there's still some areas in my apartment that are high risk for a puppy. There are some places where the puppy is still just going to be able to get into some stuff and still things that I don't want puppy to destroy that puppy has access to. So that is where using my exercise pen is going to be really, really important. And then over time, I'm going to give puppy more and more privileges, but I just really, really need that puppy zone. So if you get one thing out of this, get a puppy zone, keep it, um, keep it large enough that you don't feel bad leaving your puppy in there and that your puppy is happy in there. Give them lots of stuff to do. I'm planning on rotating toys through and doing a couple other things to help make sure puppy enjoys it. But that is my preliminary plan right now for puppy proofing my apartment. So you guys can follow along with the puppy raising journey with my new podcast, the Pandemic Puppy Raising Podcast. And um, you guys can also follow along at journeydogtraining.com, the Canine Conversations Podcast, all that sort of stuff. Um, and always subscribe here. You know, hopefully there'll be lots of good puppy content coming out here. Uh, I'm gonna go pick up the puppy now. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>